Praise the Lord, everybody. It's good to see everybody this wonderful uh, Sunday morning. Uh, let's turn in our Bibles to uh, 2 Peter 1. 2 Peter 1. Hey, it is uh, Pastor Thomas's birthday today. Yeah, all right. Everybody give him a hug, and he just loves that. He just really enjoys that when you're there, the close affection that everybody gives him. And so just uh, do that, okay? All right. All right. Let's go to our Bibles uh, this morning. And I'm, we're starting a summer series. It's called Grow Up. And uh, dealing with uh, to this morning, our faith, precious faith. And how many know faith is important? And uh, that you, um, we're talking about faith. How many? And uh, let's go to, so here we are, Second Peter 1. The picture here in Second Peter is, it's A.D. 64. There's just been a great fire in Rome. Some have blamed Nero. So some are not too sure where the fire came from. But uh, Christians at this point are beginning to be persecuted. And there's, uh, at this point, they've, re they've gathered a number of the Christians. Uh, one was Paul, who is later going to be beheaded. Uh, he goes under house arrest for a couple years, set free again, and then he's uh, later beheaded. Um, here in this situation, uh, Peter, this is his very last letter. He's speaking to the churches and, and for the, his farewell address, and he, he is going to be uh, crucified. And he asks to be crucified upside down because he doesn't feel like he is worthy to be crucified in the same manner as Jesus. Alongside of him being crucified is his wife. And they, uh, as tradition goes, and that they uh, just uh, were honoring, honoring the Lord and giving their lives for and being martyrs in this time. Well, this is just before that happens. And, and Peter is concerned about what is going on in the church. He isn't so much concerned what is happening within the, um, uh, w with the persecution, what is happening externally to the church. What he is really concerned about, what is happening internally in the church. And so in chapter 2, he's really going to be dealing with some false teachers and doctrine that was beginning to get into the church. And there was just this anti-authority that was going on. There were people that were very greedy. They are manipulative. And also they are allowing all kinds of sexual sin uh, to begin to be permeated into the church. And Peter is more concerned about what was going on in the church than what was going on outside of the church. And he says, hey, this is what I, I want to address uh, right, at, right at the beginning. And so uh, even some of the illustrations that he does use in this is he uses um, the flood, and he shows how Noah's family was all saved. And then he talks about Sodom and Gomorrah, and he talks about how Lot and his family was saved from Sodom and Gomorrah. And he's saying, hey, be, be that remnant, be that, that godly group in, in the midst of an evil and wicked and crooked and perverse generation that you would rise up and you would be uh, that godly, godly people. And uh, so Second Peter, well, let me read this. So, and what, he, what he's emphasizing here, he says, um, the opposite of slowly allowing the corruption and decay of this world is to overtake it with continually growing in your relationship with Jesus. This, this is the counter to that. The, the opposing force that is happening here, this is the counter to it, is that you would always have a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. So here we go, Second Peter 1, and I'm going to read a, quite a big section here, so here we go. Second Peter 1, 1 through 4. Simon Peter, a bondservant or a servant, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of God and Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue or excellence, and by which we have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped 
the corruption that is in the world through lust, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness, love. That's going to be our series uh, for the summer months, right there, those verses. For if but these are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted and even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, on account of all of this, brethren, brothers and sisters, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance or a welcoming will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, see, uh, Peter at this point, he's, he wants to emphasize the goal isn't just to sneak into heaven, okay? Uh, you know, I asked Jesus in my heart, and now I have got a ticket to heaven, and now there's nothing else that matters, okay? Or there's deathbed conversion, and, and, and I, I'm thankful for deathbed conversions. When somebody doesn't know, have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, and uh, there's a family member that goes and pursues them and begins to share the, the love of God with them, and they make a decision for Christ, their soul is saved. They give their heart to the Lord. But I'd rather see God save a life and experience abundant life for all their days rather than just a deathbed conversion. Rather than it's see, uh, so he says that, that then they will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Okay, just imagine, okay, uh, if, if we could only imagine right now, okay, people, that, that there you are, you're, you're standing before the Lord on that final day. You are standing before him, and you are presenting yourself to, to him, and all of a sudden, there's, there's people who are saying, hey, we've been waiting for you. We, we, we've seen the works that you've done, how you've loved people. Hey, I'm here because of you, because you led me to Jesus Christ. Oh, you were generous to that missionary, and you helped him when he was in trouble. You, you gave yourself there. You served in the children's department. Hey, I was one of those little kids who gave my life to the Lord. And instead of just squeaking into the kingdom, all of a sudden, there is is this huge grand entry everybody is cheering the angels are cheering the uh, the the people are cheering all of heaven is cheering because you're entering into with um with a grand entrance into the kingdom of god that is the possibility okay everybody just give me an amen on that one okay okay it all starts here it all starts here and that is with faith to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of God, our God and Savior Jesus Christ. Right there, what he's referring to, and I just got to point this out. This is uh, four years of Greek uh, coming into play right here, and I just, just can't avoid this one. He is calling Jesus God. The structure that this is giving here is saying, Our God and Savior Jesus Christ. And, and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and and of our Jesus, our Lord, okay? Obtained like precious faith. When we, we talk about faith, okay, um, we're not just talking about just hope or that everything, hey, I just have faith that everything's going to work out or I just trust in the goodness of man. That's my faith. I just have a sense of positivity, you know, and just everybody right now just think happy thoughts. Okay, just, just think happy thoughts. No, a person, when he says he has faith as a Christian believer, what does he mean? Okay, biblical faith is putting our complete trust and allegiance in our Savior, Jesus Christ. That he has paid the price for our sins. Come on, you should be cheering right now. That he's paid the price for our sin, and he's given us the, his presence in the power of the Holy Spirit to live the Christian life. When Jesus died on the cross, he paid the price for all of our sin, for all of us. 
but each of us personally must put our trust in him. And in doing so, we receive the, the righteousness of God, okay? His blood covers our sin. And when God looks at us, he's no, look, no longer looking at our sin. He is looking at Jesus. He is looking at the blood of Jesus. And that covers. And if we could put it in a, a simple terms, we are as right as he is. That is the righteousness of God. When we stand before the Lord on that day, that there, we, you know, what is going to give you the opportunity to say, hey, I am welcome to come into heaven. It's not on the basis of, oh, I walked a few older ladies across the street. It's not that I uh, sold uh, girl guide cookies because I never did, okay? <laughs> you know, it's not because of this or that, of my own good works. I am here because it is because of the work of Jesus Christ that he accomplished on the cross, and that I have a personal relationship with him. That is how we have the righteousness of Christ. And here, here is the beauty of all. We, we have obtained like precious faith, okay? It is his precious faith, like precious faith. You know, it isn't, oh, the apostles, man, they, they, they had faith, Woo. They're, they have a faith like, oh, my faith's down here, you know, or, or the Jews, you know, they're God's special people, and they've got a faith that they're, they're like this. Well, I'm just a person from Oregon, and I don't have that kind of, of faith. How many have seen um, on TV the AT&T commercial, okay? The AT&T commercial where who gets the best deal? Okay, and the girl says, hey, the new cousin, and she, she's writing on the whiteboard, and she writes, who gets the best deal? Our new customers, they get the best deal. And then, then she goes down low and she says, our existing cu customers, they get the new deal, the best deal. And, he's, and then she circles it and goes, everyone gets the best new deal. And when it comes to Jesus, everybody, we all get the best deal. All through Jesus, it is equal. Whether you are, you know, a born-again Christian in the first century, whether you're a born-again Christian in the 21st century, whether you're a born-again Christian in, in America, or whether you're a born-again Christian in Papua New Guinea, it doesn't matter. Everyone has like precious faith. Well, you don't know my past. You don't know the, the rotten things I did, the, the shame, the guilt that I bear and carry. It doesn't matter. You get the best deal. You get like precious faith. Well, I don't feel worthy. You know, I just, I'm just a small wee little person. I'm a worm. No, 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 no. You need to understand you get like precious faith. Well, you don't know my brokenness of my past. No, 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 no. You need to understand you get like precious faith faith. Well, I didn't grow up in a church. You know, I'm, I'm not like, oh, some of these really spiritual people. No, you have like precious faith. Everybody who receives Jesus is covered by the blood of Jesus and has asked him to forgive him or her of their sin receives the same faith over their life. They are as right as he is. And when Jesus and when God looks at you, he doesn't see all your past or all your sin or all your shame or all your guilt. He sees the righteousness of God. That is what every one of us have received in Jesus. Everybody said amen to that. Now, here, here's the truth on this one, though. It, it, it doesn't stop there, okay? Our, you know, with, with God's righteousness, our personal relationship with Jesus Christ. How many know uh, the second law of thermodynamics? Okay. Uh, the second law, uh, I see that, Mick, that engineer's hands. Okay. <laughs> is, is there anyone going twice? You know, oh, I see that engineer over there. Okay. <laughs> the, the second law of thermodynamics is simple terms is entropy always increases. 
there's a natural tendency of any isolated system to degenerate generate into a more disordered state, okay? Things move from order to chaos, okay? They move from order to chaos, okay? So let me apply this to your spiritual walk with the Lord. If you are not growing, you are decaying, okay? And that, that's why you explain and you see people. You know, they, they could be doing wonderful. They've, they've received Jesus into their heart and lives. They come to church. Their family's doing well. They're growing in their relationship with God. And then something gets in there. And maybe it's drift, just spiritual drift, laziness, maybe idleness. Maybe they just get offended or something happens. And they just start to fade. And all of a sudden you say, what happened to that person? The second law of thermodynamics on a spiritual level began to happen in there. If you're not growing, you will be experience extreme gravitational pull on our life to conform and to be lowered to world standards and ways. That is what the Bible is emphasis emphasizing here. So here's a question for you. Are you growing up or are you just growing old? Okay, that is the question. You know, a little child, you know, we, we expect that child to grow. They, we feed them. They do grow. It's amazing what happens when you feed your child and they, they grow. You know, and all of a sudden you're, you've got the little markers going and on the, the, the pantry wall or whatever bedroom, you have them growing. They're getting education. They're getting all of those uh, wonderful things that the kids get. Their birthdays happen. And... Peter is telling the church, you must be born again. You must come to a place where you receive the Lord. Yes, but you also must grow up, okay? Your spiritual growth has nothing to do with your age. You know, you can meet some older individuals, and those older individuals are actually very stunted in their spiritual walk and their spiritual ways. You can meet some younger individuals, and because of their pursuit, because of their zeal, because of their hunger after the things of God, those people have actually grown up even uh, beyond their years and because of their, their pursuit of the Lord. And second thing here is you grow spiritually as much as you want. You know, the secret is using what God has provided. When God says, hey, would you obey me in this matter? And you do, you grow up. You begin to uh, do what Jesus has told you to do. You grow up. You grow spiritually as much as you want. Now, here's some things you, you need to know, okay? His, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, our excellence, by which you have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Twice, uh, there's a phrase that is used, in, used there, and you, you can see it in there. It is the word given to us, okay, given to us. And the idea of this phrase given to us is it's a, an endowment, okay, or a, a significant gift is given. And the first thing you need is the right investor. And the right investor in this situation is, is God. And he, God is giving two endowments into our life. He is giving his power and he is giving his promises. And the, the truth is, God has given you those things because he believes in you. And so here, here is the God who created the heavens and the earth. He sustains the heavens and the earth by his power and by his word. He, that same God has given us access into his power. It's like a patter, battery that just uh, won't die. Okay, finish the phrase here, people. I can do all things through... 
through Christ who strengthens me, who literally, it, it means the one who puts his power in me, who God calls, he, in, he, he enables. He gives us exceedingly great and precious promises. So here, here's the situation, okay? We, God has unlimited resources. He is the bank, okay? He is the bank. He gives, he has more than enough. He has complete and total resources. He is the bank. But he gives us promises. Promises are the like the check or a bank card that he gives each and every one of us. And he says, look, you are going to go through things in life. There are going to be circumstances that you're going to face that are designed uniquely for you. And in this time, you're going to need to access what I have given you. You're going to have to access the, 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 the power and the resources that are all there. But what it's going to be with is a promise of God. Okay? There is a, something that is going to be quickened out of the word of God to your heart and to mine in, in those seasons. And in those times, you've got to say, Lord, I'm praying, I'm meditating, I'm waiting on you. And all of a sudden, he speaks to our heart. We take that thing and say, Lord, right now, I take your word at face value. I apply it into my situation. I put it into the bank. I say, Lord, I need your grace in this situation. I need your power to go to work on my behalf. Lord, I'm trusting you to do what only you can do in this situation. And it's the two working together. And our spiritual maturity depends upon how do we treat God's promises in our life. There is an encounter that you are going to have with the character in the presence of God you have never had before in your life. God wants to ex show himself to you in a new way that you have never seen before. And that is the purpose of all those circumstances and trials that we go through, is that we would depend upon him, but we would get to know him in a deeper and a further way. And in those times, we have a choice. We have a choice where we could say, God, I am going to ignore this thing, and I'm just going to let it just go by. I'm not going to be begin seeking you. I'm not going to pursue you in this time. Or I am going to begin, Lord, I'm going to be praying. I'm going to be adding into my faith, and I'm going to be search searching you, what you want to do in my life at this time. And God will show up in, in a big way. You know, there are exceedingly great promises that make us partakers of the divine nature. The word partake here, it has the idea of to partner with, to share. It's actually the Greek word that we're, uh, many are familiar with. It's koinonia, that we would become a part of the fellowship of sharing God's presence in our life, that there would be a, uh, our life would be attached to God's life, and it's sort of the fellowship, not the fellowship of the ring, but it's the fellowship of the king, Okay? Do you get that? <laughs> that we begin to experience God's presence in a deeper way. You know, C.S. Lewis said uh, these words. You always, every sermon needs a C.S. Lewis quote. Here's mine. Okay. I believe in Christianity as I believe the sun has risen. Not only because I see it, because, but because I see everything else. You know? Just, and here's the truth. When you begin to experience God's presence in our life, it affects everything else. Life and godliness. That word life there is divine life. It's this divine quality of life. And it also godliness. Hey, I am more and more, day by day, I am more like Jesus Christ in everything I do. And that is what God is working in us. He wants us to grow up. He wants us to experience him to the fullest in these days. Now let's talk about uh, grace and effort for a second here. It says, but also this very reason, he says, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and a virtue knowledge. See, see there, there's God's part, okay? His part is his power and his promises. Then there's 
your part, okay? And that is you are giving all diligence to add, that is to supplement with the, these other areas, faith, virtue, and on it goes, knowledge, and there. Here's a, something we need to understand about our spiritual walk. Our growth in Jesus it takes cooperation. It takes cooperation with God's operation. God is giving us everything. Now, and we just can't say, oh, just let go and let God, you know, and just do nothing and just let it, just let it happen. You know, it requires us to make a diligent effort. Do your best. Move, move away from the area of natural drift, laziness, and ease, okay? So here, here's this paradox, this contradiction, seemingly a contradiction of terms here, okay? Uh, work out your own salvation. How many know this verse? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, okay? Then he says in the next verse, for it is God who works in you to will and to do of his own good pleasure. Okay, so there is a part of where you are working out your salvation, and then there's a part where it's God's will, he's putting his purpose, his desires in you. It is his power that's working in you. So, for example, let's say a composer. That composer, he makes some sheet music, and he writes all the parts, he puts all the cadence, he does all the parts for all the other musicians, the composer has done his part, but it still takes a musician to do their part, to play that part. It's, like, it's a, as if a doctor, he would say, okay, look, we need to operate, there, you need a surgery, we need to do what we need to do here, okay, he, I will do the operation, I'll give you the medicine that you need after for post-op, but at, after post-op, uh, you have to take care of yourself. You know, and all of a sudden there's medicine and there's or, and taking care and making sure that you completely recover. You know, they're, they're, what Peter's talking about here, he says, hey, there's seven supplements I want you to add to your faith. How many know, like, um, when, I came, when I came down from Canada, Canadians actually eat pretty bland food, okay? You know, it's, it's meat and potatoes, and that's about it. You know, don't, don't get anything spicy. When I first came to the men's meeting, and, and all the men said, okay, I need my supplement here. What, what is your supplement? It's Tabasco sauce, you know? You know, they, they are, it's all, all are hotter than hotter sauce, you know? And it's like, it's never fully finished until you have that supplement, okay? Well, I want to give you five ways uh, you can grow in your faith. Ready to write these down or on your iPhone, iPad? Or your paper. Here we go. Number one, uh, first of all, is receive God's gift. You know, if if you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus, you would say, "I am not spiritually have not asked Jesus to come into my life. I'm not right with God." Um, that's the beginning. For the, maybe you say, I, "I've once served the Lord. I followed the Lord, but now I'm doing my own thing." And now I need to turn back and follow the Lord. Hey, what a great thing to say, Jesus, I'm right. I'm ready right now to follow you. You know, the Bible says, everybody just uh, read, say this one with me. Romans uh, 6.23. For the wages of sin is, but the gift of God is, eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And it is through Jesus Christ that we can experience the forgiveness of sin. How many are thankful for that? Amen. Amen. You know, we can all receive God's gift. That's where it all begins, by receiving his forgiveness. Number two, uh, pray the promise. Pray the promise. We, we're, we're people of faith, okay? Let's do Romans 10, 17. See if you know this verse. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the? The word of God. The, the Greek word for word here is actually a, the word rhema, okay, which is the idea of a quickened word from God. And so again, I'm going back to this place where we're going to need to take the promises of God for our life and say, God, what do you 
saying to me, what do I need to hear in this time? Because what I see isn't very good. Okay? We walk by faith and not by sight. We need, we need to have our ears open to what the Lord is saying. We need to have, God, what is the promise for my situation? The University of Wisconsin in 1984 was playing the University of Wisconsin, uh, University of Michigan in college football, okay? And this happened to be a game where the University of Michigan was destroying the University of Wisconsin. The, the first quarter, the Michigan scored a couple touchdowns, and then second quarter they started uh, scoring a couple more touchdowns, and it was to, to the point it was a blowout in the third quarter. But the interesting thing that was happening simultaneously was all the crowd from Wisconsin was getting louder and louder and cheering more and more, even though they were losing terribly. And all the coaches and the, these players were wondering, what is going on? And Michigan scores another touchdown. But Wisconsin fans are getting louder and louder and louder. Well, it turns out that all the Wisconsin fans had their portable radios. And it was the fourth game of the World Series, and the Milwaukee Brewers <laughs> were just beating the St. Louis Cardinals, and, and everybody was listening to the Brewers beat the Cardinals. See, what, was, what they were seeing was defeat, right? But what they were hearing was victory. <laughs> and what we need to get is our ears to hear what God is saying to us and speaking to us, maybe sometimes in the most darkest, most difficult situations. It's like, Lord, hey, I, you know, hey, my fan financial situation, hey, it's terrible. Lord, I need to hear you. Lord, my marriage situation. Lord, I need to hear you in this situation. You know, Elijah, when he was, uh, there was a drought. But he says, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Can you hear what God is doing in the middle of your drought? When things are terrible, when things are not so good, can you listen to the Lord in the midst of that and believe that the Lord is going to do something amazing and something powerful as we begin to take hold of the promises of God. Somebody give me an amen on that one, okay? Okay, here's the next one. Make the connection between faith and seeking. You know, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. We, we need to pull out of passive spirituality. Everybody, there needs to be a thrust. There needs to be zeal. There needs to be a passion in our heart for the things of God. That we are crying out for more and more of the Lord. Trusting him. Lord, I get, without faith it is impossible to please him. You know, we, the just shall live by faith. By faith. It is their lifestyle. Okay? Uh, here's the, the fourth one here. I want to encourage everybody to do this, all right? Read Mere Christianity, okay, by C.S. Lewis. This is for all the intellectuals in the crowd, okay? Read the book uh, Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. Okay, there's also a couple other books you can check on Amazon. You ready for this? Uh, Next Steps by a guy named Chris, Chris Hodges. And then another book, Questions of Life by Nikki Gumbel. I want to see everybody have a firm foundation in their spiritual walk. Uh, the Alpha Course is a great course, which, which uh, Questions of Life sort of follows there. And that is a basic introduction into the Christian faith. God wants, Jesus Christ is the rock, as we heard this morning. That everybody has a firm understanding of who Jesus is, 
what Jesus has done for us and where it takes us in our journey from that point on. Get some good solid foundation and good theology into your Christian faith, okay? Mere Christianity, next steps, questions of life, okay? Everybody said amen to that one, <laughs> all right? Here's the last one. Um, we'll have the musicians come up this time. What one habit do you need to change and work on to get out of your faith rut? Okay. What one habit do you need to change or work on to get out of your faith rut? You know, maybe it's a Bible reading plan. Maybe you need to join a life group. Maybe you need to get back to church. Hi, everybody who's online. Uh, get, go get back to church um, after, after your COVID, COVID sabbatical, you know. Um, there's, there's a thing called habit stacking, habit stacking. And habit stacking, uh, if you try to make too many changes at the same time, the chances of success go way down. So don't get overwhelmed and say, hey, I'm going to do these 55 things and I'm going to be changing. Hey, work on one thing, this one thing I do, okay? What is it? Is it a Bible reading plan? Is it life groups? What, what, what is it that God is emphasizing to you? Maybe it's starting to work out. Okay, here's what the Lord's been speaking to me. He's asking me to dro drop 25 pounds, and it's like, Lord, I said, I can't do it. You know, the food is too good. <laughs> you know, the food. And I said, Lord, I'm going to work out my own salvation with fear and trembling. But then he says, but it's your will, and you need to make me want to do that. I need your desire in me to do that. I got to get rid of this COVID weight, okay? And I, I, there is one thing I am working on. Okay, what is the Lord talking to you about? Oh, <laughs> we're having an altar call for that one afterwards, all right? Okay, come over to my place for dinner afterwards, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but pick a, pick a habit and go to work on it, okay? Be consistent in those areas. Lord wants to really help you. What's he talking to you about that one area, those five areas, okay? Glory to God, all right. Um, Let's all stand. I just want to ask right now, is there, is everybody just is getting up? And I do want to ask this question. Is there anybody here today, you, you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You've never experienced the righteousness of God. It's not by just being that good person. It takes something more than that, and that is the righteousness of God. And it's not our own righteousness. It's the righteousness of Jesus. We need him to forgive us of our sin. We need him to come into our life for a personal relationship. And if you're here today and you're not right with God, would you just raise your hand right now and say, Pastor Jeff, I want to get right with you. The Lord today. Is there anyone here today? I want to give that opportunity. Praise the Lord. Let's all lift our hands to heaven. Father, I pray right now for each and every one in this room, Lord. Lord, I thank you first and foremost for Jesus Christ, Lord, who's died for our sins. Lord, we have faith in him. But Lord, I also thank you for your power and I thank you for your promises for our life. Lord, that we could have everything that pertains to life and to godliness. Lord, Lord, don't let us be a people that are given over to decay, Lord, to corruption, to the forces, the gravitational pull of this world, Lord. Lord, I pray right now, Lord, that by your grace, by your help, by your Holy Spirit, Lord, that we would add to our faith, Lord. We'd make every effort. We would do our best with your help, Lord. Lord, to pursue all that you've called us to pursue. Lord, right now, we just 
we don't want to just squeak into heaven, Lord. Lord, we want to have a very effective, fruitful life in this world, Lord, that honors and pleases you in everything. Lord, we just ask for that right now in the name of Jesus.